I would say that this is a, a highlight, but really, no. for Celtics fans, you may want to avert your eyes. This is a heat light. This is something where I did not expect this, Kendrick. No. I, I knew that Jimmy Buckets was balling. I knew that the Heat are deep. I know that they are well coached. But my goodness, uh, is that Duncan Robinson feeding Bam for the alley oop? Duncan why, Robinson? Why are we surprised? Did, Whoa. We, did we forget? Oh! Put him in a spin cycle. Yeah, he put him in the basket. <laughs> That's what he did. Is that why are we surprised you? about Duncan Robinson? Do we forget what he did in Nobody the Nobody forgot, but he hasn't played uh, all year, and now he's back in the rotation yeah, he's balling like right that. Now. The fact oh. of the matter is the Heat watch were the, all gas. Watch Jimmy point at him. No <laughs> breaks. Stay petty so you don't have to get petty. All you gotta night love long. It. And Grant Williams is like, yeah, God, you know what? You got to take that. My the teammates best. don't have my back. And then in the third quarter, I mean, Bam was Bam. everywhere. Absolutely. Being a live threat at the basket. But great job by Eric Spolster by having spacing, running multiple actions to get that it, for Bam. It's almost like they could have Robert Williams in the game as a defender. Uh oh, don't get me started with that. We're oh. going to get to that. Gabe Vincent, <laughs> game high, 29 points. And then Jimmy Butler letting the people know. And did this look familiar to you, Perk? Yeah. Yeah, I remember Al Horford doing it. Oh, you mean a little, like a little something like that? Yeah, it's no fun when the rabbit got the gun. Well, then, <laughs> end of the third, the heat up big at this point. Oh, Window dressing. Robert. Jimmy Butler hits the mid-range jumper. The Heat go on to win 128-102. They take a commanding 3-0 series lead. Let's take a listen to Eric Spolstra after the game. That was a, a, a solid, mature, professional uh, approach. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of pent up uh, stuff here. Um, and we're getting closer, uh, but you know, w we still have to, f to finish this off. Believing, uh, you know, believing in one another, believing that we can get a win, believing that we can beat, you know, the number one team in the league. Uh, you know, when you belief is real, uh, and we got a will to win. So the Heat, they won by 26 points in game three. That's the largest win by an eight seed since seeding began all the way back in 1984. They're also the third eight seed to win multiple games by 20 points in a single postseason, joining the 99 Knicks and then the 2007 Warriors. So I just want to make sure I get this right, Perk. This is the same Miami Heat team that was trailing the Bulls in the fourth quarter I mean, of a play-in game, mm -hmm. and now they're one win away from the finals. So, so how are they getting this done? Air exposure right the best coach in basketball bam and jimmy have shown us that they're one of the best duos in the game when it comes to the postseason when it matters the most and all you have to do is surround them with a bunch of dogs and that's what the miami heat has done when you look at gabe vincent he's not backing down from anybody he loves the matchup he's picking up 94 feet he's not afraid to take big shots you look at Max Struz, he don't care where he gets the ball at. He's going to let it fly. And Duncan Robinson, oh, my God. We seen it in the finals. He didn't play a lot this season, but he's ready for the moment. And I cannot forget about the young fella, Caleb Martin, coming Ooh. in off the bench. Yep. He is so skilled. And he has so much confidence. And talk about the leadership of Kyle Larry and Kevin Love, that yep. championship pedigree that's coming in putting their body on the line. That's why the team is number one in the league and charges take. You know, we talk all the time about if you have a player like Jimmy Butler, you just need to get, you have a window to win with him, right? You have a window with Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry. And when they got those guys, mm -hmm. the question was how, how wide open was that window? How long was it open? And it felt for a lot of time this year that it was over. Like these guys yeah. were, were older and they didn't, they weren't able to stay healthy. Kyle Lowry was hurt all year with that knee injury, but their experience in these playoffs it has been fun to watch just from a chess match standpoint. Like, they know what Boston's going to do before Boston even tries it. They are setting the tone. Boston is reacting to them rather than the Boston Celtics, the number two seed, right. putting their their power out there and making Miami react. There's no yeah. doubt that all of this trickles down from Jimmy Butler, yeah. but can I do my best big perk and give some 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 flowers to the big man here? Because yeah. Bam Adebayo has been incredible. 
this postseason. And, and yes, offensively, yep. they're 6-0 when he scores 20 or more points. But defensively, I mean, he has been everywhere. He, he, his defense has been great. He's been holding opponents to 38% shooting when he's contesting. His two-man game has been excellent. I just feel like it's a little bit of everything with him. And there were questions about him, too. That's right. And he get back to that all-star level. Where's he been at? And then all of a sudden, it's all hitting at the right time. And, you know, all year we talked, could those four guys, so that's Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, yeah. Kyle Lowry, could they all play together? Could they Could they elevate each other? And it, it, it's not even the question anymore. Yep. They can all play together. They're all taking their turn. And you mentioned Caleb Martin. In this series, I think he's been he's been the second-best player for the Heat. Right. Like he's been outstanding, and they, they he's the mismatch that last year they were not able to exploit. This year, he has it. Do, do you know he was cut by Charlotte? He's a twin brother, and he was cut. Well, same on them. I mean, let's bring in Brian Windhorst into the discussion. He's actually in Miami. You were in oh, the building, oh, Brian. Well, what you. stood out to you watching the Heat up close? <laughs> okay, so here's the thing about the Heat. I know that they are executing great right now. I know that Jimmy does his little trash talk and his mind games, and he points and he looks at you <laughs> funny and all that stuff. But here's the thing. In the regular season, the Heat were a bad offensive mm -hmm. team. They were not just average. They were bad. They were bottom five in most offensive categories, and they were 27th in three-point shooting, okay? They did not make three-pointers, which is one of the reasons why they battled to the end of every, almost every game and were relying on clutch play at the end of every game. In the playoffs, they are number one in three-point shooting. Number one amongst all the playoff teams. And by the way, if they shot this percentage in the regular season, they would have been number one in the regular season. So they've gone from being the 27th best three-point shooting team to the first best three-point shooting team. And when that is happening, everything else just works better. They, have, they are the second best offensive team in the postseason after the Nuggets. And they are playing a team in Boston who was much better defensively last year. Boston could get away with having a bad mm -hmm. offensive night against the Heat in the playoffs last year. They can't get away with it anymore. So Magic Johnson, Ooh. his tweets can grab your attention for multiple reasons. But <laughs> one, I mean, he rarely points it out like this. In my 44 years of being associated with the NBA, I never thought I'd see a Boston Celtics team, a franchise with 17 championships, quit. Quit! I know Celtics fans all over the world, they must be disgusted, devastated. The Miami Heat, they blew them out 128-102. So that's what Magic had to say. Perk. Ooh. What do you have to say? Oh, I have a lot to say. <laughs> I bet. And I'm going to start off by saying this. I've been hearing the whispers. I've been hearing the conversations. The disrespect about is this team right now and last year better than our 08 team, 09 team, KG Paul and Ray area? And the answer is, hell no. And don't ever disrespect us like that again. So I'm coming up here to the big boy because I got a free sheet, and this is the sole reason why, the number one reason why. But listen, let me hear from Joe Missoula first because I got to hear what he got to say. And Malcolm Brogdon, here's some video. Here we go. We starting right here. All right, here it is. One thing about it, I love Grant Williams. Look, he's all up in Jimmy's face. Look, Jimmy like, okay, cool. Give him a little smirk. Right here, Jimmy, come back, get the and one. Freeze! Look at this friendly face right here in Derek White. That is very disappointing. You see this? Now freeze! Malcolm Brogdon, why are you looking at Grant Williams and not Jimmy Butler? Okay, take it a step further. Gabe Vincent, pull up Trey. Watch Jimmy, stunt. Taking the picture, it's one, two, three, and Jason Tatum is coming from behind four Celtic players. He's standing at half court flexing, including Jaden Brown. Nobody steps up, right? So they're getting pumped. That's one thing that never happened in the 2008, 2009, 2010, is that we never got pumped. So please don't ever put us in the same conversation ever again. Ramona, take us inside the locker room. What are the Celtics talking about? How are they feeling right now? Yeah, I mean, one, one player I talked to said just everybody is frustrated. Mm. And they missed a lot of shots. And when you miss shots, you get down. I mean, they're 11 for 42 on threes. And when this team, as Brian has talked about a lot, they, they live by the three and they die by the three. But that cannot translate to the defensive end where you just quit. 
defensively. Yeah. And when you miss shots, it's demoralizing. It's, it, it, it affects the team's spirit. But as Perk just pointed out, there's not spirit there. And when you, that's how you lose a game like this. I, I think in that locker room, there's a lot of people looking at each other, wondering if this is the right composition, but also wonder it's just too many egos right now bumping up against each other. Jason Tatum is in this role as a point guard. His, dri his job is to drive and kick and get doubled and set everybody up for threes. But that's that's my turn, your turn with Jalen Brown. That's not team basketball getting everyone involved. And I think when the shots don't go in, that's when you see the defensive breakdowns and you see all the egos looking around saying, why is this happening? Let's bring Brian Windhorst back into the conversation because he's actually there. He's in South Beach. He saw this up close. I, because I'm curious, what is the biggest difference that you have seen between this Celtics team right now and who we saw last year? They, they play soft, and that's not a character assessment. Um, when you watch them play defense, they just, the heat go to set a screen, and they just, they soft switch. They just say, okay, mm. I'll go over on this guy, you go on that guy. They let the heat players initiate the drive before they even touch them. Um, that wasn't the way they played last year. Frankly, it wasn't the way they played most of this season. They were a pretty good defensive team this season. Not as good as they were last year, but they were pretty good during the regular season. And they're coming into this game where they're in this environment in a must-win game, and they're just playing soft defensively. Mm. And, you know, I think it's a mindset of the way they approach this season. You know, I don't want to make this just about Ime Udoka versus Joe Missoula. Sure. But Ime Udoka made decisions that were defensive-based yep. first. His lineups, his mm -hmm. rotations, his style. Joe Mizzoula Missoula does it offensive base first. And by the way, that style led to a juggernaut team that was one of the best teams in the league and had home court advantage throughout the playoffs coming into this round. But when you need it in the playoffs, that playing soft on defense is not serving them well. And that is a huge difference between the 2022 Celtics and the 2023 Celtics. Well, not to mention the living by the three, dying by the three. It's something that we saw, we talked about during the regular season, and right yep. now it's just not panning out for them. And I, and I don't want to take anything away for, from the Miami Heat. The Celtics no. certainly are making all sorts of mistakes, but the Heat has them sweating like Richard Jefferson in a high-button shirt. How's that work for <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.